Good morning everyone or whatever time it is when you're watching this. It's obviously morning for me. I have wet hair and I'm pretty fresh out the shower although I did go to the effort to put makeup on for you. <laughs> I have actually got a pretty chill next sort of three days ahead of me. I sort of recently decided that this week would be a kind of week off for me. I don't know if I'm the only one, I really don't think I am, but I think given everything that's been going on over the past year or so, it's been really easy to neglect taking time for yourself and taking a break from work. And this applies, I think, both to freelancers like myself and those of you who work for companies but have just been moved to working from home. When you can't see your friends and you're at home all the time anyway, it's just really easy not to take that time off and it's so important to do that so although I have a few things to do today like emails <laughs> that I want to tick off the list otherwise it's going to be pretty chill and I thought I would film a reading vlog whilst I was chilling for the next two days and in particular a reading vlog I've been wanting to film for a while that I have done in the past and really enjoyed is reading the lowest rated books on my TBR. I really enjoy this theme because it gets me to pick up books that I've maybe neglected since not hearing as great things about them even though I was excited about them originally. I've actually read some absolute favourite books whilst filming these vlogs in the past as well as some that I haven't liked and I've definitely agreed with the general consensus on so it's always really really interesting and I would just like to chill and do some reading like I said over the next few days. Um, I do want to go on some walks and do some tidying so I also want to make sure I have an audiobook in the mix that I can listen to when I'm doing that. And aside from that, I may or may not do some editing work on my novel, but like I said, this is my time off, so reading and chilling is the main priority and I thought I would take you along with me. So as always, first things first for these reading vlogs is to have a look at what are the lowest rated books on my TBR. I just realised I'm very frogged up today, <laughs> um, so let's do that. So if I go to my Goodreads want to read shelves and organise them by average rating in reverse order, the first book that comes up on the list is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas and this one only has an average of 3.11. I mean, I say only, there's probably people who hate this book and love this book and that's why it's ended up at this rating. But from what I recall, this is a sort of dark academia mystery novel set at an elite university and I thought it sounded so fascinating. I love those themes. So I definitely want to read that one because I have the hardback on my bookcase. So I think I will start there actually. We then have A Duke, the Lady and a Baby by Vanessa Riley, which is a historical romance I believe I have on Kindle and just haven't gotten around to reading yet. But I do love a historical romance. So that may be one that I read over the next few days. It definitely depends on how quickly I read these other books. We then have This Is Not A Ghost Story by Anne Andrea Portes, which actually I do have on audiobooks. That's exactly uh, what I said I needed. I needed at least one physical book and one audiobook because I do want to be able to listen to something whilst I'm tidying or going on walks. So This Is Not A Ghost Story is another, well, sort of horror mystery novel. There's a bit of a theme here, isn't there? I wonder if um, it is just more of a divisive genre, the horror mystery genre, and that's why they tend to get lower average ratings by whatever you consider um, low or high. <laughs> uh, so that is one that I would like to listen to. I think I'll definitely make sure I listen to that and read Catherine House. But we also have in the top five here Monstrous Heart by Claire McKenna and Hotel Iris by Yoko Agawa. And is there anything else sort of close to those in ratings? Underneath 3.4 we also have Romophobia. Uh, by Aidan McGarry, which is a non-fiction book, Yellow Cake by Margot Lanigan, which is a collection of short stories, The Devil's Footprints by John Burnside, which is another sort of like dark mystery novel, American Housewife by Helen S. Ellis, another short story collection, and Lion's Honey, uh, The Myth of Samson by David Grossman. Yeah, that's everything that comes at, at an average of less than 3.4. So I'll definitely pick from those if I do manage to get to a third book. And it is really interesting to see that there's quite a few darker novels in there. I mean, I'm pretty sure Hotel Iris also comes under that category and short story collections. Those 
are potentially just far more divisive um, and taste dependent than other genres. So yeah, I think I've definitely got um, a few things to pick from and a place to start and I will just check in with you throughout the next few days as I'm doing my reading. page 45 of Catherine House and so far I'm actually really enjoying it. I think that's the right word. I'm finding it a very compulsive read. It is one of those sort of like dark academia books, a little bit like The Secret History where there's just so much atmosphere, very detailed prose and it all goes together to create this quite like dark claustrophobic environment that you can't stop reading about, like you keep turning the page. I know virtually nothing about where this story is going or who our character is or why she is where she is. Something has happened in her past that she's made reference to that she's running from and that has led her to take a place at Catherine House University which I mentioned is a very elite college in the USA that loads of people want to get into and she's got into for whatever reason and she thinks it's a perfect place to escape to but even there she sort of leads, leads this very disengaged, disinterested life. It's something I always find quite interesting in books, how beautiful prose can be used to describe and bring to life depression, something that is so dark and awful to experience. Um, but the way in which some writers, including Elizabeth Thomas, use such beautiful words and such detailed words to describe a feeling that feels so dark and disengaged and it's it's very interesting and like I said it's very claustrophobic and very dark and very compulsive to read but don't know where we're going so 45 pages in no idea what really is the plot like why is she at this university like why have they accepted her why are they um letting her stay there why is this university the way it is because man it is very very like <laughs> cult-like and where the book's going to end up I have literally no idea so I'm enjoying the prose I'm enjoying the atmosphere but given that I really couldn't tell you where the book is going I cannot speak at this point to whether I'm going to end up loving this book or not because that is going to have a massive impact on it where this book goes and I don't know where that is I don't know what to expect which is really cool um but like, we'll see. Maybe I will hate where it goes. Maybe I will love where it goes. I don't know. And I'm I'm quite excited to really just, like, curl up and, and dedicate some time to this book because, like I said, it's such a compulsive read that I think it's one that you would want to read in a very short space of time and very quickly and just really, like, be absorbed in until you reach the conclusion. So that should be really interesting. And now I'm going to go on a little bit of a walk and listen to some more of my audiobook. a slight change of plan. Basically I started listening to This Is Not A Ghost Story whilst I was tidying up but very quickly it felt too similar to Catherine House like it's about a young woman that might be fleeing something at least she's changed her life and gone somewhere new and um, dark contemporary-ish vibes so I don't know it just felt very similar in like themes, plots and even just like narrative style to Catherine House that I thought I should not read these both at the same time. It is going to confuse me so much. I might still listen to it, but not until after I've finished Catherine House because I just think there's too many parallels there um, to for me to read them simultaneously. But I did have another look at what audiobook 
books I have access to that have lower average ratings on Goodreads and the next one on my list was The Drowning Eyes which is a sort of nautical vibes lady pirate fantasy novel or novella it's from the Tor novella series so I thought I would start listening to that one it's not very long because it is a novella and I'm a big fan of the Tor novella series I usually find some really fantastic favourite authors in there so it seemed like the perfect alternative and different enough to complement um my reading of a different book in physical form if that makes sense so yeah slight change of plans but that's now what I'm currently listening to as well as physically reading and I will update you when I have more thoughts on them so I am past page 100 in Catherine House now I'm just snuggled up on my little sofa here reading and like I said before it's a very compulsive book and it is not going in directions I expected it to go when I started it I don't know what I went into this book thinking I think any book like this I'm sort of I sort of enter into wondering if it's going to be paranormal or not I really don't think it is um and I don't want to give away any spoilers but yeah it's sort of sort of taken some turns um and uh, I just don't know what to expect but I'm very intrigued um yeah like not bad things but I'm just sitting here at a point I think this is sort of the second time in the book where I've just felt like what is happening um but in a really compelling way so I thought I would just I don't know I guess check in with you so you were getting my like live reactions but given that I don't want to give away any spoilers, I can't really say that much. Um, I'm just about to go and make dinner for my mum and I. Um, and then I might actually have a bath this evening with a nice bath bomb and keep reading my book. I'm hoping that I'll at least pass halfway uh, before the day is out. So there's just over 300 pages. So I would like to at least get past page 150, but I think I could actually probably read more than that because, like I said, it is quite a compelling and fast read, despite the intricacy of the prose. So, yeah, maybe maybe I'll get to, like, a page 180. Shall we make that the goal? 80 more pages or so. Uh, well, I'm past page 100, so I'm a little bit under that. But, yeah, I will update you on how I fare with that. On a morning walk and I've been listening to my audiobook so I thought whilst I was having a little breather I would update you on it. So I think I already mentioned that this is a sort of nautical lady pirate fantasy. It has a few different perspectives. The main one however is a wind mage or weather magician. <laughs> I forget which terminology specifically is used but she has control over storms and she's part of this religious order, which is so interesting. Like the world building in this book is so interesting because it seems like quite a dark magic system. It's quite a violent magic system and being part of the religious order involves a lot of violence, specifically in order to control the magic and those that wield the magic. And I love reading about kind of magic systems that I've not come across before that feel a little bit different, that feel a little bit unique and a little bit imaginative and the world as a whole does feel like that. We're also spending most of the book uh, aboard a ship as this weather magician travels with a crew of, I mean are they are they pirates? I guess they're just sailors. <laughs> pirates probably the wrong word. Uh, sort of sailors who have um, accepted her money to uh, transport her further up north in this fantasy world. And we are following along on that journey. It is a novella, so despite all of that sort of new information, that world building, it is quite fast paced. And I gather that's what most people's problem with it is when I was reading the reviews of why people weren't rating it as high highly as some other books and it's just because they feel that as a novella it tries to do a lot 
and it's kind of difficult to do as much and describe as much as the novella is trying to do in a short space of time and I very much agree that it could totally work as a novel there's so much going on I'm about almost halfway through I think and a lot has happened but a lot still needs to happen so it's been quite a fast process and a novel would have definitely worked but I kind of expect this from novellas at this point like I kind of know what I'm getting with a sci-fi or fantasy novel because any sci-fi or fantasy world if it's not part of a series has to do a lot of world building even in a novella which can mean that they are quite jam-packed so it's sort of more of a taste thing I would say whether you are into that or not if you far 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 prefer like long detailed descriptions rather than like really punchy uh, fact dropping then maybe this kind of thing isn't for you but I know a lot of people like me really love the Tor novella series as a whole and I think it stands up amidst that but I will be intrigued to see where it goes I mean maybe it tries to do too much at the end we, we will find out but overall I'm really enjoying it so this is the mess that happens when I film TikToks because that's like my favorite thing to do at the moment and I wanted to share this with you here because it might be something you're interested in if you haven't had a look at my TikTok yet which is that I've started a new series over there where I take a retelling and I share with you the original sources for that myth so if you're a fan of A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes then these are the books that you would want to read in order to familiarise yourself with the original tales that inspired this book. And as you can see, I've got a few here. It is the Trojan War, so of course a lot is covered, but specifically I sort of featured books that shared the uh, women's stories as much as possible, including a few plays by Euripides. So yeah, I just wanted to flag that up in case that was something you wanted to see more of because I will be uploading more of those over on TikTok. finished I'm finished both books actually um I finished reading this one physically and finished sorry it's late and my brain's a little bit <laughs> fried but I finished listening to the audiobook whilst I was um picking books for my patrons over on patreon um if you're interested actually I updated my patreon this week and from May onwards, I'm going to be hosting monthly live stream reading sprints for my Patreons um, at least once, but hopefully twice a month, um, which I'm super excited about because it's just going to be a nice sort of chill, cosy environment to kind of like sit down and read with other people. Um, obviously, there's absolutely no pressure to support me on Patreon. It's only there for those of you that feel they can and want to donate a dollar or a pound or two and the tiers and extra content I offer on there is um, just part of like creating this very like chill cozy friendly environment so I can keep in touch with you and um, say thank you so yeah I will have my Patreon link down below as always if you're interested in uh, those reading sprints that like I said I'll be doing monthly or any of the other things I offer on there but the books the books the books <laughs> that's what we're here to talk about my brain like I said so let's start with this one because I feel like this has been the book that has dominated this vlog which is quite fun actually it's quite fun to like spend time with one book in a vlog and really like deep dive in it so this book ended up being split into three sections which are the three years at Catherine House University and I have to say the middle one dragged ever so slightly so their second year there um, our main character Inez's second year there did feel a bit slower compared to that first year where I said that I really couldn't stop reading it felt very compulsively attached to the story and the prose it felt slower and a little bit harder well not harder but just as though I was turning the page and less was happening in the middle portion which Oddly enough, is similarly to how I felt about The Secret History by Donna Tartt. 
I know they're both dark academia books. I'm not saying that they're the same plot wise because in this book, the university itself has a dark history and a dark secret um, as opposed to simply the students. Um, but at the same time, there's definitely some overlap there in sort of the kind of characters. And I just think it's interesting that in both those books, I felt that they were slower in the middle it might just be something about the structure of the genre. Um, or when you get past that initial excitement of the beautiful prose, you start to wonder where you're actually going. But then there were some good twists and turns and it did feel like it picked back up near the end and I felt very much like I couldn't put it down. I don't want to spoil anything, but it very much reminded me of a classic horror novel from the uh, 1900s and if you've read it you might know which one I mean if you've read this book let me know in the comments and we can chat about it if you think you know what book I'm talking about let me know in the comments just make sure you label your comment as containing spoilers because if I say what it is I think it would sort of give too much away but it gave me those vibes and I thought it was really really interesting I can kind of understand why this book would be a Marmite it's not a new favorite for me but I think it was a solid book um uh, that I don't think will be for everyone but for others they're going to really enjoy that kind of almost suffocating claustrophobic disturbing beauty that books like this have and it just needs to find the right readership. I then, like I mentioned, finished my audiobook which I really enjoyed. I think like some of the reviews mentioned that I read, it does try and pack a lot in and my thing that like if I was an editor or a beta reader, what I would have preferred is that there wasn't multiple perspectives. I think it wouldn't have felt like there was as much being crammed in if there was just one perspective because I wouldn't have felt like I was supposed to be growing attached to multiple characters or trying to get to know multiple characters. I felt like really attached to the main character as I described them before, the storm mage that I mentioned. I really, really liked her. I really felt like I got to know her, but I didn't feel as attached to the other character, like the captain that we heard from. And I am very picky with multiple perspectives. There is a very specific way that I like my multiple perspectives to be um, and any other way isn't wrong, it's just not necessarily to my taste as much. But that being said, I still really enjoyed this book. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't got slightly higher average ratings because I think it's so incredibly imaginative and detailed and I would definitely be keen to read more fantasy set in this world or by this author. So I'll be looking into that after this. So I'm, I'm glad I read it. I'm glad that I read both these books. I thought they were both very interesting, very, very different, um, will appeal to different people. And that is one of the beauties and joys of literature. So that's kind of where I am. That is what I have read over the past couple of days and I think I'm just going to bring the vlog to a close here. It feels kind of perfect that I managed to read two books or listen to one book and read one physical book in the space of two days. I don't typically read a book a day but as I mentioned multiple times it was um, more of a chill few days the past few days for me. So yeah I have really enjoyed taking you along on this vlog and I hope you have enjoyed coming with me. Do let me know if you have any more requests for themed reading vlogs on my channel. I would love to hear them and until next time happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone!